All right, for the first part of segment one today, we're going to look at absolute power optional rules. That's right. The main book has a whole bunch of optional rules that you can look at, things to do with your attributes, individual skills. Uh, we'll cover optional combat rules in the next video and even expanded damage mechanics in the third video. But theoretically, this is going to be a long one. Hopefully I jinxed myself. So uh, let's dive into this now. Uh, if you want to throw the advertisement stuff up while I'm getting the right page here. All right. I'm going to do that beforehand. So he's like, what? Should have. Yeah, you should have told me. But uh, if you want to uh, donate to Legion of Myth, we're going to keep this money, you know, b before we were given away to, to wounded veterans. But now we're going to keep this. Oh, yeah. So if you want to give us money, you can give it through YouTube or Twitch. If you want to give YouTube and Twitch like up to half your money. We don't we don't like that. You don't like that. Nobody likes that. So try PayPal or try Ko-Fi or try Streamlabs. All of these you can find in the des description below and all of them will give us, you know, as much money as you want to give us minus three to five percent, which I think is fair. It's fine. Yeah. Processing fee or whatever. Uh, I've had a few people tell me that Streamlabs works just fine, and a few people tell me that Streamlabs doesn't work. I don't know what the deal is. It's set up. There's nothing more I can do with it. So if it's not working, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but all right, let's get into our optional and expanded rules. So superhero adventures typically feature epic throwdown battles between heroes and villains. You and those anything? What's oh, God, thank you. <laughs> Pro streamer people, don't worry about it. It's all fine. Eh. Yeah, semi-pro. I'm still working my game. Oh, there you go. There you go. See, it's right there. Right there, sure. Why weren't you reading it with me? My bad. <laughs> Superhero <laughs> adventures typically feature epic throwdown battles between heroes and villains, and those combats can get quite intense. It is vital that Absolute Power's task resolution rules be sufficiently robust and comprehensive to engage the players and GM. Yet equally important that the rules offer a streamlined presentation to support the story narrative. Now. If you're a dirty story gamer, like Bear likes to call himself, which I'm not 100% opposed to, although I think that story gaming leans too far one way, and I think that you know what I call war gaming uh, leans too far the other way, uh, I think there's good middle ground. The tri-stat system does that for you. It is a simple die roll mechanic that this is the difficulty, beat it, let's move on. It doesn't try to get into all the nuances of reality. It doesn't try to break down... Uh, every little conceivable option you have your attributes your stats on your character sheet you basically are rolling 2d6 versus that have a nice day let's move on sounds efficient yeah it is it is very efficient but... we don't care about the character so let's look at optional attributes and you're like wait what there are already a million attributes we have to have optional ones now too well you don't have to because it says optional yeah, just saying you don't need it <laughs> this is what this is more this whole thing is basically like if your table wants it they want more complication because they want more customization then the game master can offer this as an official option is that what we're talking about uh, i i would say you're leaning in the right direction but i'd okay. also say that i haven't fully read it so <laughs> i skimmed okay. it over to generally know what i'm talking about but uh i haven't fully read it so i'm kind of learning along along with you here copy that the entries presented here are either expansions that add a variety of choices to existing attributes or new introductions that support optional game rules presented later in this chapter. These entries were deemed optional either due to the potential for added complexity that may not be desirable for all gaming groups or because they are primarily aligned with a specific style of play. Okay. Sounds, like, sounds like yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's take a look at. We're not going to look at, by the way, we're not going to look at all these. I wish I had my note cards in front of me because I had something written down as to what we were going to look at. But, you know, preparation is what pros do. And as we already learned, I'm not a pro streamer. Oh, there we go. Um, what chapter are we on? 10? Do, do, do. What page is that? 194. Okay, so there we go. Chapter 9. All right. So we have uh, Blackout. Only assign this technique in games using the shock value optional rule, which we'll get to on page 194. So, you know, get that in a little bit. We've got Deadeye. We've got Debilitate. We'll come back to these if we want to look at them. Because well, the, the, uh, the uh, Blackout one is good for, like, a boxer type because it says here you can knock someone out with stun damage. Uh, has the talent for knocking their opponents uh, unconscious when inflicting stun damage and exceeding the target's shock value. Okay. Um, there's a chart that I want. I thought 
It says 196. Who demure? What page at 194? Oh, wow, it's way out. Okay, so here we go. Here's the optional list. So from here, he, now can you read that? No. Oh, well, too bad then. Uh, okay. <laughs> see, uh, you should be able to kind of read. Uh, that doesn't give them all in there. No, I can see him fine. How about there? Sure. If you can pick one from each column. By the way, the columns are no different. It's just an alphabetical order thing, but three is a good, good number. And we'll have Heathen Dog pick one from each uh, column. I'm not picking cultural arts. That sounds stupid. Um, uh, biological sciences in the first one. Okay. Um, leadership in the second one. Okay. And seduction in the third because I saw demure earlier, so okay. I want. I want seduction. So do you? So do you understand what these things are? Because I haven't actually talked about this yet. Because I just go forward a couple pages. What last? These are, what? These are Skill. individual skills. So normally in the TriStat the system, groups. you don't have individual skills. You have skill right. groups. So yes. if you are a, uh, if you, if you're a, a public relations officer, you basically have all the skills wrapped around public relations yeah if, if you, you can if you can convince your game master that the what you want to do falls under public relations you get to use that that skill right. added to your attribute and whatnot and so, right. i'm sorry added to your statistic and whatnot this is about having individual skills hmm. so if you want to have the optional rule of individual skills you can do this we well, said the first one you wanted to look at was biological, uh, science. biological sciences so let's see biological sciences so it's going to cost two points per level. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing a you know, hundred point game, you could have up to 50. No, you can't. <laughs> um, the relevant stat is mind. And then you have specializations into astrobiology, bacteria and viruses, bioengineering, botany, genetics, physiology, and zoology. And honestly, you can come up with more. This just gets the brain juices flowing and kind of provides the majority of what you get out of it. It says this diverse field covers scientific knowledge of how living things survive, thrive, and function. Now, you may be saying, Max, you haven't covered how these individual skills work. We're going to go back and look at that, but since I'm on this page right now... Yeah, we're gonna... The biological sciences would be cool, like, uh, if you are facing an alien invasion, figure out what the aliens are weak to, you'd want a guy with biological sciences, you know, something like that. That would work. Yeah, as long as there isn't some sort of xenoscience, I agree. Uh, what was the next one? Leadership? Leadership. All right, leadership. Also, two points per level. Relevant stats, soul. You got to have some soul to be a leader. Uh, specializations are business, cooperative, political, spiritual, strategic, and transformational. I don't know transformational. Transformational leadership? What the hell is that? Is that is that a cult? That sounds like a cult. <laughs> <Doesn't it? laughs> um, the talent of having inspirational vision. Well, there you go, cult. <laughs> Visions yep. and goals. And communicating them effectively to others to motivate and rally others in adopting and working toward these objectives. Um, I, wish it, I wish it told us what the what it does to the game. Instead well, of just well, yeah, so well, I'm going to get back to that. Like what oh. individual skills do to the game. Um, okay. I, I actually did bypass that kind of intentionally to show what they are first. Okay. So in the game that I'm writing, if I remember correctly, I have five or six social skills similar to what he's got here, but it's essentially like leadership, charm, uh, many people, I forget what they all are, but, but they, they're different aspects. You know, some people who couldn't sell ice to an Eskimo, but could blink well, a couple of times and everybody fawns all over them, right? You know, yeah. people who are some great motivational speakers and they could, they could get the troops rallied up and everybody's going to go, but uh, you don't want the guy, you know, motivating your child or... Or, or or trying to haggle with you because he just isn't going to be good at it. He's going to be, give me money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah. A, a, uh, a gruff gunny sergeant will, will get his men to take that hill, but he's going to make all the children cry. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then you said seduction. seduction. Okay. All right. So talking about that seduction. <laughs> all right. Once again, two, are they all two points? All the ones I well, picked. No, well, no, there's one, one, no, one. There's, one there, there's some that are ones. There's some that are three. I saw them. I just. Oh, did you see it. a three? Wow, three yeah, for an individual probably. skill. Okay. All right. Uh, so with seduction, two points, body or soul. So looks or basically looks or charisma, right? I guess you can choose depending on where you're strong. Yeah. Uh, emotional, mental, physical, political, social, spiritual, and verbal. Spiritual seduction. 
Yeah, that's that's like a that's like that that uh, yoga instructor that has sex with all of his students. That's him, and makes all those YouTube videos. Yep, <laughs> this is just stretching. It's not nudity. Um, <laughs> a character with this skill is adept at exploiting sex appeal. A successful skill role will convince another person that the character is genuinely interested. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's it's your. No, uh, that's not how seduction works. No. Yeah, it is. No, no. Seduction tricks the other person into into believing they are attracted to me. Not that I'm attracted to them. Of course I'm not. I'm using seduction. I'm lying. But I have to convince them that they're attracted to me. That's seduction. They yeah, that's wrong. exactly what it says. No, a skill role will convince another person that the character is genuinely, that I am genuinely interested in them. No, I'm tricking you into being interested in me. No, that's again, that's what it says. That Convince another. So I am the character. You are the other person. I am convincing you that uh, I am generally interested in you. That's not seduction. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> okay. Because you're already interested in me. I don't, you're no. not seducing me. I'm convincing you like, hey, I like you. Yeah, okay, you like me. It doesn't make the other person like me, which is what I want. I want them to sleep with me, not convince them that I want to sleep with them. Of course that's true. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> this like, is backward. This is backward. No, it's you're backward. Written wrong. <laughs> you're, no, it's, you're backward. <laughs> apparently, it's, it's Canadian-style seduction. I, I have no idea how they have a population. Okay, well, Heathen Dog, once again, is becoming obstinate over language that he's wrong about. So we're going to move on here, whether or not the subject response will depend on their own romantic inclinations. Boom, right? And sexual preferences. That's, That's wrong. Okay. <laughs> move on, man. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later, and you, you'll apologize in the next stream. It's fine. Uh, all right, so going up to... Uh, do, 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 do. For the skills, for the skills, skill costs, uh, and skills. Nope. Oh. Option attributes, we got hard boiled. We'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, uh, so, okay. Let me assign the. Okay. Work. Here we go. What's that? You said you were going to look at how the skills work because it didn't explain it in the write ups. So, only assign this attribute in games using individual skills rather than skill groups. Oh, you got to change the whole thing. This isn't additive, this is a replacement. Looks like it, yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, a skill represents training or natural talent in a particular specific field. With the exception of actual weapons, handling, or unarmed combat, which is covered by other attributes. There are dozens of different skills, each of them considered their own sub-attribute uh, rated in ranks to differentiate from normal attribute levels from 1 through 6. Acquiring multiple distinct skills is the ideal method for creating a versatile character. Now, why is this an optional rule? When you might be looking at this now going, isn't this, because then I'll just from the was it the last time that we did this even heathen dog was talking about uh individual skills he was talking about a skill i think it was the last video or maybe or maybe it was the week before but uh and he was actually relating more to individual skills because it's what we're used to mm -hmm. why would why would you not use this well i mean it it, it makes character creation a little harder because you don't because you're not using skill groups anymore using individual skills so you have to you have to put your points into a bunch of different places keep keeping better track stuff like that so i understand why that would be harder and i get why you'd want individual skills to really really customize your character to be your character to be unique for your vision but in this game i personally would keep the skill groups i wouldn't choose this but i understand why someone would so for the easy way to put it out there is it's really do you want a class-based game or do you want a skill-based game now, to be fair, the skill groups aren't exactly like classes, but they're close enough where you get a couple of skill groups that turns you into a class of sorts. So if you want to play a class, something like, look, I'm a knight. I can do things that knights do. I'm or you know, maybe more apt a soldier. You know, I can do things that soldiers do. That's yeah. it. I don't want to have a, 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 a military rank skill and a military bureaucracy skill and a... <laughs> You know, and uh, and uh, I can uh, I can dig a foxhole skill and so forth. Obviously, I'm exaggerating about the skills, but you get the idea. So it depends on what kind of nuance you want in your game, really. And I, to be fair, I can go either way, just as long as all the characters are doing the same thing. Skill cost each level. Of this attribute provides ten skill points. Oh, 
So you're definitely going to get a bunch of points. So those points we looked at, so like his seduction skill cost two points. Well, he mm -hmm. gets 10 per level of this attribute. And this is only one point per level itself. So if he has, just for the sake of argument, he has 10 levels in this. He spends 10 points in this, right? That's he now has 100 skill. points to spend on, on individual skills. skills. Now, we are also talking about, why is this skill worth one? Why is this one worth two? Why is this one worth three? Well, here you go. Framework skills, these skills only occasionally have a significant impact on an adventure, but are important for a character's background. All right? Adventure skills. Okay, now these skills are often used in many sessions. In a typical superhero game, skills such as driving, mechanics, and street sense are examples of adventure skills. And then genre skills. These skills are vital to the focus of many storylines. In a typical superhero game, such skills as acrobatics, computers, and persuasion would be genre skills. And your mileage may vary depending on the type of adventure you're running. Yeah, I, I don't know if biological sciences is going to equate to adventure skill. I would put that more as a one point. But because, you know, it'll only come in handy maybe once in a while, not often. But I, I guess eh, it depends on... I mean, as a game master, you can make uh, make any ruling you want, really. Yeah. Uh, all right, then there's social mastery unassailable. Okay, now I know we're going through this quickly, but we got a lot of stuff to cover today. If you want to know more about what here, I'll zoom in for you. You want to know what far shot get zoom in, dang it, far shot hard boiled are? There you go. Pause it right there. But I'm scrolling down to the next. Thing. The idea is that we have optional abilities, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna have optional defects. You want more points for your character. I really want to get the 100 skill points. <laughs> and I just don't have enough points for it. Well, let's check this out. You're demure. Only assign this defect in games using the expanded social combat game mechanic on page 218, which I'm guessing we're going to get at some point today. Uh, the character is more susceptible to shame and embarrassment during hostile social engagements than the mind and soul stats otherwise suggest. So oh. this is somebody who's easily in skin. easily embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, unsettled. Oh, I'm not going to read them all, by the way. A lesser defect, again, only if using sanity points. The character is more susceptible to experiencing trauma for horrific events than the mind or soul stat otherwise suggest. And of course, the picture shown is a caricature of your average serial killer coming at you. And I would be unsettled too. I don't. I don't need the unsettled defect to realize that. Oh God, that's a that's a that's a choppy choppy axe murder guy. All right, derived values. Well, now we're going to start talking about shock value because we haven't actually touched on that yet because it's mm -hmm. optional. If a gaming group wants damage to have more realistic effects, players should calculate the shock value for their respective characters. If a character suffers an amount of damage equal to or greater than the shock value from a single attack or other trauma, there's a danger the character will be stunned. This is very similar to, uh, was it uh, old school D&D, &D, where if you took half your hit points in one blow, it's a death save or die. Yeah. Um, there is a danger that the character will be stunned, knocked out, or suffer a serious injury. And go to page 214 for more details. Your character well, shot. A lot of games do this, right? I mean, uh, even Earth Dawn has the the wound mechanic, where if you take a yeah. certain amount of damage at one time, you get a wound, and it gives you minuses until the wound mm -hmm. is healed. And a lot of other games have the same thing. So, okay, all right, I get it. Your character shock value is equal to the maximum health points divided by five. So, if you have a hundred health points, 20. you divide that by five, you get twenty. You have a shock value of twenty. Okay. So. Okay. That's actually closer to the Earth Dawn wound system. <laughs> yeah. Uh, increase shock value by plus 10 for each assignment of the combat technique hard-boiled, which we looked at above as an option rule. Now you see why those optional abilities are tied to the optional chapter? Yes. Because you have to be using these optional rules in order to use it. Shock value cannot exceed one half the character's normal maximum health point total. Oh. Now, social combat value. The rules for social combat on page 218 require characters to have a couple of new derived values. Since the talent that the character has for witty societal engagements is dependent on both mental agility and force of will. Uh, social combat value is the average of the character's mind and soul stats. Okay. Society points. 
character also has a social resiliency analog to physical health points known as society points. A character's base society points is equal to the social combat value. So mm -hmm. you're going to have extra points. Now, so what does this do? You might be saying, whoa, 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 this is getting way out of the scope of the game. Well, that's the point. That's why they're optional rules. If you're playing a heavy role play, probably a heavy politicking style game with negotiations, uh, 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 public intrigue and so forth, you're going you're gonna to want these uh, society points. If it's not for your game, don't use them. They're optional rules. You might be playing more of a Cthulhu thing. Okay, I guess sh shock value isn't for Cthulhu, but uh, you know, you might be playing more of a, a an accurate military game where you want the wounds to be more than just you take some hit points and move on. I don't know. We want the potential to put people out before you actually kill them. Here you go. And then sanity points. Now we get to the Cthulhu one. For yeah. gritty human horror games and paranormal occult adventures that explore the ephemeral nature of reality and humanity, players should calculate the sanity points for their respective characters. Use of sanity rolls in a Silver Age or four-color superhero campaign is uncommon, but may be appropriate in a specific narrative application. So let's be honest, most superheroes don't go, oh my god, I'm losing my mind because I saw a boogeyman. You know? Yeah. But if you're, if you're playing like a pulp noir type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if if you envision your game in black and white, this will probably work. Yeah, a Dick Tracy type thing. Yeah, well, I don't think he's a superhero necessarily, but you know, mm. sanity points represent a character's relationship with reality and conscious understanding of the greater world. Traumatic situations that okay, befall a character. Extra word in there <laughs> that befall a character can subtract from the current number of sanity points, as can revelations that strain the fabric of a character's perceived existence. Wow, it's almost like this rule is ripped right from Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> I know, right? Like, uh, like when when you when you you when I'm sorry, when your character realizes he's a character and he's in like a, a role playing matrix, he's gonna have to lose some sanity points. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and to be fair, I'm not saying that as a complaint. It's just, I mean, that's the whole point of sanity points in Call of Cthulhu as well. So once a character's sanity points fall to five or below, his grasp on lucidity and rationality begins to falter as the mind slips into eventual madness. That's when their dog and cat begin talking to them and, and telling them that the lady downstairs really needs to have a ventilation in her head. She needs it. She can't, you know, she can't breathe properly. Let's let's yeah. help her out with that. She needs an extra hole. Your character's base number of sanity points is equal to the sum of the mind and soul stat. Oh, so add no average this time, add mm -hmm. them together. Uh, increase sanity points by two for every level of the unassailable attribute. Reduce sanity points by two for uh, for every one rank of the unsettled defect. And that's what we looked at above. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to read any more of that. We looked at generally what individual skills are. I know we're doing this a little out of order. That wasn't my intent, but we did it anyway because I want to keep moving on. Genius skills, we'll look at them. Um, casual skill exposure, you can read about that later. Informal education, again, that's getting a little too deep into the weeds for what I care to cover. Skill specializations. Now, this is something that may want to consider. Character can select one specialization for each skill, such as Boyer Fletcher, Blacksmithy, Carpentry, Enchanting Objects. So, like, when we looked at uh, Seduction, he can pick, uh, what was it? Wasn't What was it? Transformative? Or no, that was under Leadership, wasn't it? So, he did not pick Transformative Leadership. Why? Because I just said he did. I'm a cult leader. <laughs> He's a cult leader. There you go. Uh, so, this single specialization is provided with the skill at no extra point cost. So, you get that for free. Sure. The character may acquire additional specializations for a particular skill at a cost of one skill point. That's it, just one. So you basically wow. have the umbrella, so it's easier to learn the other uh, specialties underneath it. Sure. Each skill entry suggests that several specialization options, uh, though alternate ones, can be assigned instead with GM permission. Now, what's the benefit? When a character makes a skill roll that is influenced by the special, specific matching specialization, a minor edge is applied to the roll. If the roll is already receiving a minor edge, the benefit increases to a major edge, and we talked about those in a previous video. So okay. there you go. There it is. I mean, uh, with, with my transformative leadership, I get a minor edge, and in turning you, that's you, into a proper cult follower. I'm wondering if I, I think recult would fall under religious, though not transformative. No, and, ah, come on. <laughs>
Either way, I, I it's funny transformative. Like I, it's like I can picture it, but I can't explain it. I'm transforming you from a normal person to an idiot. That's that's what's going on. Genius skills. A skill rank beyond the usual rank six limit is considered a genius skill that represents an unusual mastery in that field. For example, a mechanical genius character might have the mechanic skill at rank eight. The GM may allow characters or NPCs to have genius skills if their background supports it. A character with a genius skill might even have the hounded defect to represent fame and recognition. It's strongly recommended that genius skills never exceed rank 12. Well, why? Because you're just going to win every time. You're just going to win that role. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, talks about the skill entries here, and you can design new skills if you want. Obviously, this isn't a complete list for the entire world of skills. They're just the ones that you're probably going to want for uh, for a superhero game. And if you find more skills, add them. Yeah, just uh, get with your GM, talk it out. And uh, if he agrees that the skill can and should exist, then it will. And I think we are done. Yes, because optional combat rules is next. So uh, what do we have for comments for this? Uh, uh, yeah, I got one here. Uh, uh, Not Your Echo says, I thought Canadian seduction required rubbing maple syrup on yourself. That is the traditional method. Yes. Yes, you you rub maple syrup and then you put uh, you put one uh, green maple leaf attached to your chest with the maple syrup and you're signaling to all the Canadian females present that you are you are ready to mate. That's pretty much what it is. Hmm. You can quote me on that. That sounds that sounds simple. I think I'm going to move to Canada. Well, it's simple, but, you know. You got to deal with Canadian women at that point. So you're like, Arr. I don't know. I've heard some good things about uh, <laughs> about Canadian women on the fr- on the Friday night show stream, or not? It's not show stream anymore, but uh, you know, on the Friday night stream, we've got some Canadians on there. Quebecois sure. Canadian, as a matter of fact, and they've got stories. All right, that's it. That's it. Okay. Well, stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk specifically about optional combat rules now why would you want to have optional combat rules in your game well for the same reason that you might want to have optional skill and attribute rules your game to fit the tone that you are going for may need them you may want something a little more specific than just the generic hit points let's move on so we'll dive into more of that in the next video